Thomas just said something that strikes me as funny. I, I mean, I can't imagine doing anything but Magento. Magento is life as far as I'm concerned. I've heard this said more than once, I think, actually, just on this, on this tour, that, um, tour that we've been doing here. Um, so welcome to, uh, welcome to Poznan. Uh, someone titled my presentation Magento 2 Mysteries, and really the only thing I could think of was, um, well, besides my contact information, which please feel free to use it, <laughs> where is Magento Mag Mag 2? This was the big mystery, I think, for, uh, for a while. <laughs> 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 Mar marketing is going to kill me when you guys uh, post pictures of this slide. Um, who, uh, who remembers when Magento 2 was first announced? Right, so we're, we're back in like 2010, I believe. Is that right? I think that's right. Um, there were, there were some, uh, some creative, uh, creative adventures that, that uh, sort of stretched out the timeline. But this is our timeline. Um, I, I keep showing this because we keep getting the question of when is Magento 2 coming out. I never know if it's because people haven't seen this or because they've seen this and they don't believe it. <laughs> so what we have, uh, starting, uh, starting last, um, uh, the last year's Imagine, great time, I recommend it. Uh, Las Vegas is always a good learning opportunity. Uh, we announced in December we'd have a developer beta and that happened a day early. We took all of the feedback. Some of you actually in this room participated in that, uh, that developer beta. Um, helped us kind of shape the framework a bit. Um, and then fast forward all the way up to Q3, and this is where we are, uh, right in the middle of merchant beta. So what we're doing right now is we're actually building enterprise, uh, enterprise sites with Magento 2 Enterprise Edition, and we're using this, uh, this interaction as a last bit of feedback uh, before, before our, our general availability, which is in Q4. Um, those of you who are good at math might say, okay, let me see, it's, it's October, November, December. So, last quarter of the year. So, before Christmas, this comes out. I actually know the date, but I keep it, I keep it closely guarded. It's the only secret I actually know how to keep. Um, and that's just so I can keep coming to these events and doing my job. Um, so, CE and EE are going to come out quite soon. Um, in fact, I think probably if you're looking at November as a release date, uh, that's probably a good, a good thing. Begs the question, why do we need Magento 2? Right, so this is another, another mystery. Why, why go through the pain of releasing a new version of software? Um, well, it's because if you've been around, I know some of these faces have been around the Magento world since uh, 2007. Um, and basically, Magento is eight years old. So it needs an update, right? Uh, we did amazing things with Magento, with Magento 1, right? Uh, it really, for those of you who were doing e-commerce back then, who was doing, who was working in like open source commerce before Magento, like 2006 and before? Wow, only a few of you. God, I'm getting old. Um, all right, who, whoever worked with OS Commerce? A few more hands, yeah. See, see that, and that tells me that OS Commerce was around actually even after Magento. Uh, Magento came on the scene, and I can't imagine building anything with uh, building a, like a commercial solution with o OS Commerce anymore. And neither could a company way back in the day, Varian, and they decided to actually create Magento as an answer to you know the need to constantly update um, and customize a commerce application. And and when they when they released Magento one, this kind of um, this took. Uh, it, it changed the game, right? Because all of us essentially had to learn Java-like patterns, right, in a, in a PHP app. Uh, well, fast forward to Magento 2, and we're acknowledging, acknowledging something that's happened in the PHP world in the last few years. It's actually grown up quite a bit, right? We have namespaces, we have testing, we have all these great new things. Also, the customer's expectations have also changed. Um, how business users use the application has also changed. It's a completely different world, uh, both uh, for software and for commerce, than it was eight years ago. So what we did with Magento 2 was we looked at a lot of the pain points of Magento 1 and sought to uh, build, build on those, improve those. So uh, improved admin, if any of you have actually installed Magento 2, how many? So I know, perfect, oh wow. Oh, Poland, you, you guys are great. Um, 
if you've installed it, uh, and hopefully we're able to get the uh, sample data working. There's a little, little problem with that right now, but it's, it's beta software. Um, if, if you actually go into the admin and click around, you'll see that it's a much different experience. And under, under the hood, actually building stuff in the admin is no longer quite the pain that it used to be. It's got a lot of really great features. Um, and among these features, so for the example, the abis ability for business users to create filters, um, add attributes to a grid or remove them from a grid, uh, slide those things around, compose the view that they need, and then save them. We actually brought in, uh, brought in users to talk about what worked and what didn't. And then we implemented it. And we didn't just implement the view layer. We actually built a sensible structure underneath. Um, if, you, if you go and check the videos for Meet Magento Romania, um, I don't know if, if um, Marius is, uh, if you don't know Marius Stragero, you should. He's a fantastic guy. Um, uh, more internet points than anyone else in history on uh, Stack Exchange. Um, I think he's saving up for a car. Um, just kidding. Um, and he did a, uh, he did a great uh, tutorial, kind of a workshop, on building an entirely new feature inside Magento 2. Um, and he actually walks through, uh, walks through the admin improvements and so forth. I, I don't, um, Vlad, is the, um, is the video of that available? Was it videotaped? Not yet, okay. So it's, it's, it's three hours of riveting, riveting software discussion. Um, I, I think you should plan on spending a weekend when it comes out. But just keep an eye on the Meet Magento Romania website. Um, improve performance. So we saw performance as a, as, a, as a chance to really step things up. I'm not going to say that there were difficulties before. I'm just saying that there was, there was more room for improvement that we needed to take advantage of. So in, uh, if you go into our JIRA, which you can't because it's private, um, but if you could, you would see, you would see actually um, not only in, in every feature story, right, you would actually see part of the acceptance criteria is performance related. And so we actually built, made sure to build Magento with, with this whole performance thing in mind. Uh, things like uh, the return time for a collection of products to the product grid and the admin. It has to, on a certain piece of hardware, has to be able to return uh, a, a filtered selection within you know, two seconds uh, from a catalog of over a million SKUs. Um, we also wanted to work on integration. Actually, I'll just go ahead and go into this. Um, uh, also, we, we looked at uh, the touch friendly. We actually realized that people are using these, these wonderful things, um, uh, smartphones and iPads. If you don't have one, I recommend it. They're super awesome. Um, and they actually walk around their store, and they, you know, they actually, or, or their warehouse, they want to generate pick lists. They want to do things on their phone. So we want to make sure that the admin would work this way. Um, and now I'll move on. Um, performance. So really, we, we wanted to build build performance in from the beginning, not let, not let a feature pass if it slowed the application down. We also have released a performance benchmarking toolkit. Um, so this is actually good because you should never ever believe benchmarks that like a product company gives you about their product. You should actually run these tests yourself. Right? So this is actually uh, openly available on, on, our, uh, on our GitHub uh, account. Improved integration. So we, uh, we actually found out uh, from Gartner, which is one of the market research companies, that the average e-commerce store has 14 integrations, right? Um, actually, in the course of doing the study, they found a store that had four, 450 external integrations. Um, and I imagine a lot of uh, tranquilizers for their developer team. Um, uh, we also, so, so we wanted to improve our API layer. Uh, we wanted to actually... Um, just make it a bit more of a joy to work with. Uh, we wanted it more performant. We also wanted new and interesting ways of, uh, of implementing customizations. So um, this was something that we did architecturally across the board uh, and that we'll continue to build out actually after release. So talking about not just web services, but our, our so-called service layer, uh, which you'll continue to see updates, uh, updates to as we move on. Um, we also kind of wanted to, to implement code um, consistently. I don't know if, you, if you've ever done an admin, if you've ever created like an admin view in Magento 1. Um, after you replace the first laptop that you smashed when you first tried to do it, um, you would eventually figure out, okay, well, let me see. I see the same thing built here for like CMS pages is implemented completely differently over here in this other module. Even though they look the same, they're just inconsistencies in how they're implemented. 
This is a problem when, when people are actually trying to look at the application and, uh, and, and figure out how to build an analogous view. Uh, so what we've worked on is, is actually cleaning up and making our implementations more consistent across the modules. It's not going to be perfect because we have like 100 people working on this project. So one of the things that you can do, and I'll mention this later, is actually uh, if you want to get involved with Magenta 2 development, you can just fork our repository, find any inconsistencies, or when you do find consistencies, and submit those as pull requests. And we'll pull it in and fix it. Um, we also wanted to do, uh, change the way you do customizations to the code itself. Right? So we, uh, we implemented this whole new plugin system. It's really cool, right? So basically, you can take, um, you, you can consider any public method in the application sort of like a hookable thing, kind of like event observers, right? So this is really powerful. It's also going to be used for all sorts of evil. So it's going to be on us to release uh, guidelines as well as some tools to make sure that when people are implementing plugins, um, that, that they aren't breaking things. And, and, and on that note, um, one, of the, one of the great things about Magenta 2, and I think at launch, this is the biggest change uh, that, uh, for the code base, this is also the biggest change that we all have to make. Uh, testing is everything, right? So you actually will have the ability to know whether your application is fine or not fine. Um, if you add new code to the system, if you add an extension, if you uh, dot an I or cross a T, you can run tests and know that your application is still healthy. It's a big change from Magento 1. Um, other things that we're going to do, and this, so this is in the area of upgrades, because we know that sometimes, on occasion, one or two people have difficulty uh, upgrading Magento from one version to the next. Uh, sometimes we, 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 we throw in little Easter eggs like uh, breaking indexes and things like that. Um, just you know, so you guys are entertained. Uh, <laughs> Usually, usually on a Friday afternoon. I don't know what, what, what it is about the universe that's sort of like, okay, we'll plan the release for Monday, and then things happen, things happen, things happen. Well, we really need to get it out this week, and it's Friday at 5 p.m. Have a good weekend, developers. Uh, so <laughs> now, if, if you don't, if you don't know, know my pedigree now, I came from a solution partner, so I, I remember sitting in that developer seat and the client, you know, hears, oh, there's a new version of Magento out, and it's got, like, the latest, you know, oh, I can sort descending now, or whatever. It's got this great feature, and I want it now. Um, and, and so, invariably, you're forced into these upgrades as soon as they come out. So, um, a lot of this, a lot of what we've done actually ties into, uh, ties into what we, uh, what I've been talking about here. Basically, just making integrations more succinct. Um, more, I guess, better defined, sort of the boundaries of the system, uh, allows people to have uh, cleaner integrations, not so deep, and that means that you, know, you can sort of black box every single part of your system and, and, and test things in isolation. Uh, you don't have to get so far into, into the code that, uh, uh, that you're making, making really big changes that are hard to deal with when it comes time to upgrade. <coughs> Along this note, when Magento 2 comes out, we're, we'll be releasing our product roadmap. Uh, there was a roadmap there for a while on the Magento 2 website. I'm sorry, the Magento website. Uh, at least I haven't said Magento 3 yet. Uh, oops, I just said it. Damn. Uh, the, uh, so this is actually, this is, this is probably the last part of, of a real open source development methodology that, that we've, we've kind of lost, right? Because uh, what we don't want is we don't want developers working on, working on things that we're building. And we want merchants to know where we're headed from a feature standpoint. So another thing that, goes, that ties into this product roadmap is actually we're going to be doing quarterly releases. So Magenta 2 comes out in the uh, last quarter of this year. Magenta 2.1, which will be you know, just a feature release, will come out in the first quarter. Magenta 2.2 will come out in the second quarter, and so on and so forth. Uh, underneath, behind the scenes, we actually have a completely separate version for our platform, right? So when you hear things like 2.2, that is generally going to be merchants or marketing talking to you about lists of features. Underneath, developers, what we care about is what kind of changes have been made. So we're using semantic versioning to version and basically tell you what kind of changes we've made or are making to the application. 
And so that means uh, you'll actually will be starting at when 2.0 is released, the platform version is going to start at 100, just so there's no confusion about, um, wait, does this platform version tie into 2, 1? What, what, what is this? What is this all about? So we figured we'd start at 100. Um, I'm probably going to have to explain this thoroughly for the next six months, but it's, it's, just a, it's just a starting point. And if you don't know semantic versioning, it just, uh, there, there are three main positions, major, minor, patch, that sort of tell you what kind of changes we've made from one version to the next. Essentially, if that 100 turns into 101, we've made some change that affects, um, affects the public API of the application, and you probably should check your stuff and make sure it still works. And finally, for this slide, Testing is everything. I'm going to have to say this again and again. I have to tell this to myself. I have a very good colleague in the audience here, Vinay Kopp. He actually spent uh, a weekend with me because we have, we have really rich, rich life. And we sat at his dining room table, and he, he showed me the magic of test-driven development. Um, those of you who are able, lucky to get into his, um, his workshop, here later today, I'll be helping out, but I'll also be learning. Every time I get around, so you get around someone like me now, you're going to learn something. Um, and in testing, for me, there's still plenty to learn. And if you're not doing testing, how many of us are doing testing? Yep. It's okay. It's okay. Um, this has to change. This really, really has to change. I can't, I can't stress this enough. This is the thing that really sets Magento 2 apart from Magento 1, or you know, really um, sets modern PHP development apart from previous PHP development. We're not building embedded software in like defibrillators, okay? So it's, it's, not, it's not the end of the world when something goes wrong, but also we're dealing, some of you have clients that if you push a bad release, if you push a breaking release to production, and they're offline for an hour or two. That's really a lot of money. And that's a lot of customers that didn't get served and so forth. So we really want to make sure that from the beginning, people are engaged with our testing methodology. And what this means is basically you've you got to get out and learn how to test. Now, PHP, the broader PHP community has, has when, I, when I ask about testing at PHP conferences, <coughs> a lot more hands go up. And that's been increasing over time. So I want to make sure that everyone gets the message, this message. We're releasing code coverage, right? We have, we have code coverage in our core. So if you write new code or you install an extension that doesn't have test coverage, you're essentially throwing all of that out the window. This is the dramatic pause. We're not going to learn test-driven development today. We're not going to figure out um, all the ins and outs of, of, of testing in Magento 2 today. But it's something that you need to get working on. So if you are a business owner here, whether you're a merchant or an agency owner, plan on this. If you're a, business, if you're a, if you're a merchant, please insist that your agency is writing test coverage, right? And if you're a business owner, go ahead and plan on hiring, you know, Yvonne or Vinay to teach you test-driven development. <laughs> His services are totally available, and I don't get paid for saying that. Now, you really should plan on, your, on, on training your teams up to do this stuff. Okay. Um, also, we thought it would be really, really neat if we did things like release documentation. Um, if you don't remember, Magento 1 had, had a very creative, abstract approach to documentation. Uh, <laughs> You just had to simply open up the code and look at all of those code comments, which are often pretty out of date. And who knows what the most common comment is in the Magento 1 code base? Enter description here. So essentially, yes, to do. <laughs> uh, the nice thing, I, you, you can't really fault them because they, they <laughs> sort of accidentally created the most popular open source e-commerce application, and they ran out of time. We've all been there, right? You've got a deadline, and what's the first thing to go out the door? You say, oh, I'll write the documentation later. Um, and as it turns out, we have some really great uh, community folks who took it, uh, took it as a challenge and early on started releasing documentation. And now um, we've got a pretty healthy body of comments and uh, documentation for Magento 1. Magento 2, we have tech writers on staff. Okay, so 
that's, that's good because that means we're writing stuff from the beginning. So you can go to I don't, uh, devdocs.magento.com, and that is our documentation. It's available on GitHub. You can actually contribute to it yourself. Uh, the, the, the tech writing staff taught themselves how to use Git and GitHub so that you all could contribute. And we do need your help because we're not going to be able to finish the docs uh, by any means. We could hire every tech writer in the world, and I don't think we'd finish it in the next month. Uh, Magento U classes. Uh, so uh, we have people like um, uh, some members of our core team, uh, folks like Vinay, who have worked on the curriculum for Magento 2 Fundamentals of Development. Those courses are available as self-paced study online now. You, you can also start taking, uh, start taking these classes uh, this month in person with, a, with an instructor and really get into Magento 2 development. Magento 2 certification. Um, I, I don't want to say it's going to be finished in 2016, but we're going to be working on it for sure in 2016. Okay. The reason we're going to wait is because we actually write the certification tests based on what you all are doing with the code. So basically, we, we want to we write the certification test that says, like, hey, if I wanted to hire a developer to work with me, I want to know that by some measurement that this person has actually had experience, knows how to work with the system. And we can't really do that until we have a lot of deployments in the wild. Um, we have a, a brand new Magento Connect coming. Uh, it's an App Store model, so we actually see all the code. We're running static code analysis on it. Uh, we're making sure that someone didn't just buy someone else's extension, change the namespace, and then resells it for a tenth of the price. Uh, we want extension prices to go up. We want quality to go way up. And we want people to be able to make a living off of, uh, off of Magento Connect. We want it to be a nice, fair, uh, fair place for everybody to play. We also want people to be able to be confident that when they grab an extension from Connect, it's not going to totally brick their system. We'll see if we get it right, by the way. Um, I, I didn't say this. Like, all this, all this uh, uh, flowery stuff I'm saying up here, uh, really, feel free to call me on it if, if it's not going right. You know, I'm a very contactable face. Uh, there's a punching bag with my face on it out there. Uh, make, sure, make sure that you, you hold me and hold us to task. Uh, because you know, the words are nice, but the implementation is really what matters. Um, and with that, we talk about collaboration with community. Um, I've got this thing that I've been saying, like, you know, uh, there's no problem that community can't solve. Uh, we, have, we, we have arrived where we are today, um, both literally and in general, because of our community. Uh, the people who are buying or have bought Magento, bought eBay Enterprise, um, they, look at, they look at Magento uh, in large part uh, for, for its community. That's you all. If we're not making you happy, if we're not making things work for you, then we're not doing our job. And I want to make sure that we always do our job. Because I love my job, and I want to keep doing it. And that only works if we help you do your job. Okay. Uh, I want to get on with the rest of the, uh, the, rest of the conference. Uh, feel free to come up and say hi. I have Magento stickers. Uh, I have business cards because I'm a professional. Uh, I'm all grown up now, Mom. Uh, here's my contact information. Uh, please, please, please feel free to use it. Any idea that you have, anything that you have for me, it matters. It, it, I take it, I put it into the organization, and we act on it. So thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the event.